Hello, in this Awaken Learning video, we are going to learn how to set up your classes in Achieve 3000 and also how to edit them throughout the school year as students enroll and withdraw from your class. So let's get started. The first thing you're going to need to know how to do is to set up your classes at the start of a school year. So when we first log in to Achieve 3000, we get a screen similar to this. Now I'm um, so logged in as a grade 9, so mine's Empower. Yours could be Kid Biz or Teen Biz, just depending on the level you teach. Just slight variations to how things look. But regardless, everything else should look pretty much the same. And I'm going to go here to Admin. This is kind of our source for where we do all of these kinds of teacher class management things. So when I get to admin, um, if this is closed up, we're going to open up user administration. And here we're going to find all the things we're going to use in this video. Creating a new class, adding users to my class, and removing users. We're starting with create a new class. So this pop-up will come up and um, you won't have to do this step. You will not have to choose your school, but I do because I have a district account. You should go straight to this screen. And so I want to explain all these different fields. So first we want to give the class a name. And we would like you to use our standard naming procedures because when I run reports, um, if you don't include both of these elements I'm going to ask you to, it's really hard for me to tell whose class is whose and to be able to get the information that I need. So we'd like you to first put the last name of the teacher, a dash, and then the class or the block that however you want to name this particular class. So I could put like AM reading, or I could put, um, you know, block three, that kind of information there um, to distinguish which class it is. So we'll fill in the class name. Content area, you're going to want to choose whichever subject you teach. Um, you can leave the room number blank, that one's optional. You do have to put in a grade, um, so I'm just going to put eighth grade here. Um, the program, you may have other options here, but um, probably you won't. It's going to be either Teen Biz, Empower, um, or Kid Biz. So you'll select that and then it asks you for the product. Again, you probably only have one choice. Um, automatically assign new users to. This um, this is kind of your own individual preference. You have these different um, scaffolds that Achieve has built into it. I like to use the intervention one. Um, you don't have to choose any of them, but I'll tell you why I like the intervention. It's going to cause the vocabulary to come up right in their face as soon as they go to an article. And I think that's a good thing to have students practice looking over before they start reading. So I like that it brings it right to their face when they start to go to the article. The other thing intervention will do is put numbers on the tabs to help guide them through the five-step literacy routine. It's also going to help them understand what's part of the normal routine and what is involved in like the stretch article and things like that. So I like the intervention mode you certainly don't have to choose that. Um, default class. You're only going to want to check this box if this class that you're creating is going to be the one that these students use most. If it's their primary class that they're going to be using Achieve 3000 with, then you can check default class. And what that will do is just cause the um, this class to be listed at the top of their drop-down menu. When they first log in, they have to choose what class they're working under. And so this one will go to the top if you make it the default class. Otherwise, they may have to click on that and, and change to this class. So that's an option that you can choose. Dual language, um, this is only going to be necessary if you have an English language learner who speaks Spanish um, in their, as their first language in their room. Otherwise, you're probably going to leave that um, on in slash A. Okay, so I'm going to click Next. And here you can see I have no students in the class right now. I need to click the Add button on the screen where I can find the students that I want to add to my class. Now this is going to be a little hard to demonstrate because I need to obscure the student names um, for privacy reasons. But over on the left side in this Browse section, you're going to see a list of students. And you can simply click on them to highlight their name. To highlight multiple students, like when you're first setting up your class, you're going to want to hold the Control key if you're on a PC or the command key if you're on a Mac as you are selecting names. And that's going to let you highlight the names you want um, without choosing the ones in between. That's a little tricky for some people, so if you need help, let me know and I'll demonstrate that for you in person. So then you can just simply click on the Add to Class button to add those students to your class. Now, there's another method you can use. You can search for each student individually. 
which takes a little bit longer but is another method if you prefer that way. I always recommend that you search by last name um, because there's so many variations in how first names are entered. The student may be in the system differently than what you're searching for. So if you search by last name you're pretty guaranteed to find them. Um, so you search by last name and then click find user that's going to help you find students that match that search and then you just simply click on the add to class button there. Now if their student you're looking for is not in the list at all they may not be in our system yet. They may be totally brand new to using Achieve at Southwest Park. So then we're going to need to create new users. The button way at the bottom you might have to scroll to find it so a lot of people miss that. And that brings up a screen like this. Very simple to understand. Um, these ones with the asterisks mean they're required, so we have to put in a first name and we have to put in a last name. Now this one's not marked as a required field, but I'm going to tell you it needs to be there. You need to look up the student's ID number in Harmony and fill that into this student slash teacher ID box. Um, that's very important because if the student withdraws and then comes back later and you know those kind of things happen all the time, we really need that ID number in order to be able to retrieve their past records and that kind of information. So make sure you do fill in this box password is automatically generated. You can change it if you want. Some people like to make that their student ID numbers um, to be consistent with other things that we're doing as well. Um, the rest of this is oops, I <laughs> don't want to mess that up. The rest of this is optional whether you want to change these settings or not. Also make sure it's on student. That is the default so I don't think you'll have a problem with that. Then scroll to the bottom and click Save Changes and Close. Okay, there we go. And now the next step that's really important, and a lot of people mess this up, we need to, we're not done yet. We feel like we've added our students, but we're really not done. We need to click on this red link that says Return to Class List. And that's going to take us back here. We'll see all the students we've added. You might want to just double check it um, because you can always click that Add button again. Um, or if somebody ended up there that shouldn't be, you can highlight them and click Remove. But when this looks good, we're going to click Next. And we'll see our full list of students there. And then we're going to click Finish. Now, you're not done until you click Finish, so keep that in mind. Now, at this point, the students have been added to the class. It gives you the option to set up another class straight from here. It also gives you the option to print your class list, which I would recommend because let me show you what that looks like. It just brings up a PDF that you can save or print, but it's also going to show me my students' um, login names and their passwords. So especially for new students, or this may be something you want to keep in a binder, do not post it in your classroom. Um, obviously we need to protect student login names and passwords, but this um, would be a very helpful page for you to have. So you can do that straight from here, and when you're done you can close that out. When we're done with here we can either set up another class or click Close. So that's how you set up your classes in Achieve. Now let's take a look at how to add a new student to your class, you know, at any point that you need to in the year. The steps are almost identical to how you set up your class to begin with. The only real difference is that here we're, we're in this admin section again. I've clicked on user administration, but instead of creating a new class, I'm going to add users to my existing class. So I'll click on that. Again, you won't have this screen. Oops. Um, you'll just need to find your existing class here in the list. Um, there we go. And click Next. And then you'll see the students who are already in that class. You'll click Add. These steps should be very familiar at this point. Now here's where I want you to make sure that the student doesn't already have an account. We have a lot of people involved in Achieve 3000 and it's very possible that somebody has beat you to it and somebody's already created that student's account for them. So you definitely want to double check for their name um, here in the list or do a search or both if you just really want to be sure so we don't end up with duplicate um, accounts for students. But chances are you're going to be creating a new user. And I showed you this in the setup um, your classes video part of this video, so this looks very familiar. You're just going to fill in their names. Um, you do need to fill in a student ID number from Harmony. Again, very important step. Um, so clearly you won't be able to do this until the student has been put into Harmony, but chances are um, that happens right away. I'm going to leave that blank because this is just a demo student. Okay, it's going to give them their password. I can set all those things. 
save changes and close. Hello? Why is it not closing? There we go. Um, and then again, very important step, return to class list. Click next. You can see that Steve sample has now been added to my class and finish. Now you can, um, even if you don't need to print a new copy of your class list, bringing this up might be helpful because you'll need to let our new student know what their login information is. And so this class list will show that. So steve.sample.1 and paint as his password. Um, so you probably want to click on that so that you can get that information and get that to our new student and they can start using Achieve. And finally, let's talk about how to remove a student that is no longer in your class. Once again, we're in the admin section and we're under user administration, but this time we're going to go to remove users. Makes perfect sense. Now you can type in the student's last name and search for them that way, or you can, you won't have to select your school, but I do, but you will have to select a class. And your list of classes won't be this crazy long. There we go. And click submit. Okay, so then you have your list of students and each of them has a checkbox in the front. So you can click on who you want to remove from your class. Could be multiple students or just one. And then I've recently discovered you don't have both of these buttons. Um, you can only remove students from your class. And that is what you need to do, obviously, if a student has changed classes or has withdrawn. Now, if a student withdraws, I need to go in as the administrator of these accounts and permanently delete them from our roster, um, from our school accounts, so that they don't show up in our reports and start causing any sort of problems in our data tracking. So if you find that a student is still showing up in reports that has withdrawn, um, just shoot me a quick email and let me know that if somebody slipped by me and I um, wasn't aware that they had withdrawn and I can get them pulled out of there before we run our next round of reports. So you're just going to click remove from class. It'll be your only choice, I think. And it's letting you know that it has done that and that student is gone. So very, very simple process for removing students from your class. So I hope this has helped you better understand how to manage your classes in Achieve 3000. As always, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to me. I'd love to help.